Let's explore Sheets in SwiftUI. In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know. So let's get started by defining what actually is a sheet. And this is how they look on different operating systems. So as you know, SwiftUI works on all of the Apple platforms. And here you can see how a sheet looks on macOS. It's more of a popover and the same on the iPad. It's also more of a popover, but it's um, it has a bigger size than on macOS, where it just fits the content on iPad. Or the, on iPadOS, it has a certain defined size. And on iOS, of course, it covers almost the entire screen. And in this video, all of the examples that I give you and some of the APIs that we're going to explore together are focused on iOS. So on the iOS version of Sheet, some of them will also work on, or most of them will work on iPadOS and some of them might also work on macOS, but you can figure that out yourself by just giving it a try. So first, just to get started, this is something that uh, yeah, people often confuse when learning SwiftUI. So on the left hand side, you can see a sheet and it has this popover 3D effect where we can still have a tiny glimpse at the view that is presenting the sheet in the background. And then on the right hand side, there's the full screen cover, which is similar to the sheet. But of course, there are different opportunities to use sheet or full screen cover. And this video is just about sheet, as I said. If you're an indie developer working on your own apps, I would highly recommend you to try out LaunchBuddy. It's a project management tool I made specifically for indie iOS developers and it's free on both iOS and macOS. All right, so let's get started with a very basic example here. And this of course is a basic sheet, but something I wanted to highlight is of course that you will need a state variable or a state boolean to be exact that will trigger if the sheet is presented or not. And you can just toggle that Boolean via a button or some other place in your app to show and hide the sheet as it's just a view modifier. A standard sheet has the full height of the iPhone or of the device, but using the presentation detents API. So this is just a view modifier that you have to apply to the content of the sheet. So inside of the sheet closure. You can define different sizes for your sheet to support. And as this is a set, you can define multiple sizes. So in the GIF that's playing here on the right hand side, you can see that I have defined a large and medium and the user can then switch between these two. Something that's important to know is that a sheet when presented will always use the smallest detent that you give through this modifier. And then of course you can interact with it or the user can interact with it to change the size. You can check out the documentation on custom presentation detent for more details on how to customize this to your needs. But in most cases you will either use large, medium or via a height where you just give an exact height in points. Of course, there's always the option of creating self-sizing sheets, so sheets that fit the content exactly and then they scale themselves to fit the content. More on that towards the end of the video, so stick around. So let's get started with the interactive dismiss. So you can disable drag to dismiss as this uh, screen recording here shows. I am dragging down on the sheet, but it's not dismissing this because I've used this view modifier to disable that. Using interactive dismiss disabled also removes the drag indicator, but we will get into more detail on how to manage the drag indicator in one of the next slides. What isn't shown in this GIF here, however, is that if you have multiple detents, so for example, medium and large, then even if you disable interactive dismiss, the user can still switch between these modes by just dragging the sheet up and down. In this case, the drag indicator is still shown. So speaking of the drag indicator, you can use the dot presentation drag indicator view modifier. By default, it's set to automatic, but you can use the dot hidden or the dot visible case to manage this manually. And you can use this to override any system defaults for when the drag indicator should be shown. For example, if the um, interactive dismiss is enabled or disabled, you can then switch this up using the presentation drag indicator view modifier. But you should be careful because if your user can dismiss it, then there probably should be a drag indicator and vice versa. If they can't dismiss your sheet uh, interactively, then you probably shouldn't show a drag indicator. So be careful when using this to not butcher your UX too much. 
when your sheet is dismissed in some cases you might want to run some logic or some action in the background or foreground and you can use the third parameter well actually it's a second parameter but it's optional so you have the is presented parameter then you will have on dismiss and then you will have content so you can use the on dismiss closure to run some logic but of course this is not inside of the um, sheets content so it will only be able to access dependencies of the view that the sheet is attached to so in some cases where you want to execute logic on the view inside of the sheet then you might prefer to use the on disappear view modifier on that content instead so this is a bit situational sometimes you want to on dismiss parameter of the sheet and sometimes you want to on disappear view modifier of the sheets content Next, let's have a look at the background interactions API. So you can enable as seen in the first screenshot or disable as seen in the second screenshot, the background interactions. So what does this mean? In this example, I have a medium presentation detent here. So the sheet is only about half height. And if I enable background interactions, then there will be no darkness applied between the um, content view and our sheet view and the user can actually press the toggle sheet button while the sheet is presented even though it's not part of the sheet itself it's part of the uh, presenting view or the presenting view while if i disable the background interaction then you can see everything's grayed out and the user won't be able to directly tap the toggle sheet button in either of these two cases both enabled and disabled the user can tap the background to dismiss the sheet. So this is not switched up by using enabled or disabled. It's always possible to tap the background to dismiss the sheet. Speaking of the background, let's talk the sheet background. And of course, from SwiftUI, you know the dot background view modifier that you can use to apply a shape style or a view to a background of another view. And while you can use that, in uh, sheets as well sometimes if like here you want a frosted effect so here the presenting view is actually uh, completely red and then the sheet just has a um, ultra thin material as the presentation background this way we can see through the sheet and have a bit of a blur effect on the presenting view so this is a layer behind the dot background view modifier so you could now on this text hello from a sheet you could stack a dot background and give this another background shape or color i think this is pretty obvious something interesting is that you can use this presentation background api to for example apply color.clear as the background and then you will have a pretty interesting effect now i'm not sure if there are too many use cases for this but if you have a use case please let me know in the comments down below so those are the main APIs that you can use to customize your SwiftUI sheets. But I also quickly wanted to mention that sheets are prone to being moved around and resized by keyboard interactions. So if you have text fields or another kind of keyboard input in your sheet content, then the uh, keyboard of iOS will actually resize the sheet. So this one here has the large presentation detent or default in this case but it is evaluated too large in the current iOS version, you will notice that the sheet is scaled down vertically and the text field is now still in the center, but in the new center, basically in the scaled down center. So you need to keep this in mind. This can move around things in your UI quite a bit when uh, showing and hiding the software keyboard. So in some cases you might want to consider scroll views if you have some input through the keyboard in your sheets. So when should you actually use a sheet and when should you use alternatives such as a regular SwiftUI navigation? So you should use sheet if it's secondary content. So for example, if you're editing a profile, adding an item to some sort of list or showing some contextual details like they do in the Maps app. Sheets are also useful for temporary workflows. So some settings, filters or quick forms are just filled out once. Sheets can also be used for presenting content without leaving the current screen. So for example, if you don't have the large presentation detent, the user still has visual access to the main content and you can present some temporary content using the sheet. So this keeps users anchored in the current navigation flow. 
This opens up the question, when should you not use a sheet? So for example, for deep navigation, for the next step in some sort of logical flow, in this case, you should use navigation stack instead of a sheet. If the user stays in this presented view for a longer period of time, you should also use a full screen cover or a navigation stack instead of a sheet as a sheet is mostly temporary content. And of course, if you want to show a critical or interruptive alert, then you should use an alert or a confirmation dialog instead of a sheet as well as they keep context on the underlying screen. So I asked ChatGPT to sum up when you should use a sheet and when you should use alternatives. And this is what it came up with. Should the user feel like they're stepping out of the current screen or just glancing into something else? And I think this is a good design principle to follow when integrating sheets in your app. So as I hinted at earlier, let's quickly talk about self-sizing sheets. So in this example, you can see the sheet only takes up as much vertical space as our hello from a sheet text view actually needs. And of course, this is a bit more complicated, so I didn't include all the code. If you're interested in this, check out the link in the view description. It's a great uh, little article by fatbobman.com. How to make a Swift UI sheet automatically adjust height. This is pretty much a self-sizing sheet. I'll just go over uh, how it works briefly. So this setup enables the sheet to automatically scale with the content relative to the height, of course. In essence, what we do is we attach a geometry reader to the background of our sheet content and use that to measure the view size. And then using a bit of a more complex setup, we can pass that measured size into our presentation detent.height. And that way we can have the exact size that we want. So a bit of yeah, state management magic here, but check out the article, it's actually pretty simple. And last but not least, I actually have some homework for you to elevate your app. So after watching this video, I want you to open your app and go through it and do these four steps. So first you should decide if your sheets actually make sense, so the ones that you already have in your app, or should they just be replaced by a navigation step or another modal type like a full screen cover or an alert. Second. You should think about enabling or disabling the background interactivity, the drag indicators and all of these other um, little setup things that we talked about in the video. Third, you should think about using a custom background for your sheets. So in some cases, it might make sense to use a material to have a glance at what's going on behind the sheet. And fourth, you should think about your sheet sizes. So sometimes you just really don't need to show a sheet that's the full device height and you should just have a medium sized or a custom sized sheet, perhaps even a self sizing one as we discussed earlier. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel for the next one.